Good morning. Testing. Can you hear me? Yep. Good morning, everyone. As the room kind of gra gradually starts to kind of calm down. Um, it is so good to see so many of you all this morning. Um, and it's so good to be together. It's beautiful outside. It kind of reminds you of the city we live in. Good morning and welcome. I'm Greg Brock, Chair of the Roanoke Regional Chambers Board of Directors. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's State of the City Address. Today's program is important in supporting the Chamber's mission to improve the community and economy by maximizing the business climate of the current generation for future generations. We're proud of the collaborative relationship between the business community and local government in our region as we all work towards this goal. We recognize the importance of active engagement with our city's leaders in order to support initiatives that foster economic development, address needs within the community, and cultivate strong regional partnerships with our neighboring localities. I know Mayor Lee will have much to say on the city's recent achievements and goals for the future. But before diving into the program, I'd like to thank the chamber sponsors that made this morning event possible. Our annual public policy program of work sponsors, Mountain Valley Pipeline, RGC Resources, and Lineberger Construction. Our presenting sponsor, Appalachian Power, and our platinum sponsor, Virginia 811. And a huge thank you to all of our gold sponsors. Mayor Lee will recognize members of Roanoke City Council and other elected officials shortly, but on behalf of the chamber, I would like to thank the members of City Council for their service to our city and Virginia's Blue Ridge region, as well as to our region's local, state, and federal elected officials who have joined us for today's presentation. Personally, I'm having a 360 degree moment. A little over 10 years ago, my company was having a chamber ribbon cutting in the building that now houses the Grand & Collab, and we were joined by several dignitaries, including Mayor Lee, who was then Councilman Lee. So without further ado, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce today's featured speaker, Mayor Sherman Lee. Mayor Lee began his tenure with Roanoke City Council in 2004 and was elected mayor in 2016. He's used his platform to serve as an advocate for domestic violence victims and create opportunities for our youth. He is, in his professional career, Mayor Lee spent 36 years with Virginia Department of Corrections assisting people with criminal convictions as they re-entered the community upon release from incarceration. Mayor Lee takes an active role in our community, volunteering with numerous civic organizations, including serving on local and state boards and associations, and organizing the Lee Youth Outdoor Basketball League. Mayor Lee is a proud member of the Virginia Union University Athletic Hall of Fame, and personally, Mayor Lee is an associate member of Garden of Prayer Number no. 7. He was married for 44 years to the late Clara S. Lee, the proud father to Erica L. Rosser and Sherman P. Lee Jr., and the loving grandfather to two twin granddaughters, Jalen and Maya, and grandson, grandson Jonathan Jr. So please join me in welcoming Mayor Sherman Lee. much okay good morning everybody morning. you know I used to could sprint up those steps but it's like each passing year I use the rail and I got to go one step at a time so uh, but I'm glad to still be standing and I'm appreciative of that and it's my privilege to welcome you and thank all of you for being here today and those who are also watching on social media and I would like to take a moment to recognize some remarkable people who are here this morning. Now, this is always a challenge for me in making sure I recognize everybody that's in the room. As sure as I'm standing here, I'm going to miss somebody. But blame my head, not my heart. Because I do want to recognize you. And every one of you are important people. And I'm so pleased and honored that you're here this morning. First of all, let me 
recognize my colleagues on city council. I want you to stand, and all of them are not here, but I'll call their names out. Uh, Trish White Board is not here, our vice mayor. Uh, Councilman Joe Cobb. Stand up, Joe, this is an election year. Everybody stand up now. <laughs> I, I know how that rolls, man. I know how that works. All right. Uh, Councilman Bill Bestpitch is not here. Uh, Councilwoman Stephanie Moon Reynolds. I thought I saw Stephanie here. Okay. <laughs> Stephanie Moon Reynolds and uh, Councilman Vivian Sanchez Jones and Councilwoman Anita James Price. Okay. I want to thank them. And Councilmember Bill Bestpitch also, he could not be here today. And I just want to let them know that I appreciate their collaboration and continued efforts in the pursuit of what's best for all of our citizens here in the city. All of the residents, all of the businesses, and visitors. And so I would really, I'm really appreciative of all that they do. Also, I'd like to welcome some special guests here. And I will call their names, and you can just stand. I want to recognize the Warren City School Board. Stand up, school board members. <laughs> Joyce Watkins, Michael Cherry, Mark Cathy, Franny Appel, uh, Diane Casola, and Natisha Saunders. All right. Thank you so much for your presence and what you do for our school system and you got a tough job. I've served on the school board and uh, and this year, in the last couple of years, they've had to make some tough decisions. So I'm proud to have worked and continue to work with them. Uh, Ryan LaFountain, our Commissioner of the Revenue. Ryan, are you here? He is, Commissioner of the Revenue. So that's the person when you talk about personal property taxes. And I want to recognize some people who are very special to us. Our chief, uh, fire chief, Chief Hoback. Stand up, chief. <laughs> and his staff. Uh, I did not see Chief Romans, uh, but if he's here, I want to thank him for their commitment and service to the community. I want to recognize my good friend, Brenda Hale. The president of the NAACP. Brenda. <laughs> Brenda is big time. She got her star up on Mill Mount. And uh, Brenda, thank you for all that you do. Of course, I uh, want to recognize our great senator. I call him one of the best senator in the Commonwealth of Virginia, Senator John Edwards. Congressman Ben Klein could not be here, but his representative, Christine Barton, is here. Christine, are you in the building? All right. Good to see you. My good friend for many years, and uh, I'm always encouraged to see him, uh, Dr. N.L. Bishop from Carillion. Dr. Bishop. Our city manager, Mr. Bob Cowell. Bob? Our deputy city manager that does a lot of work in our community, Clarence Grill. Clarence? And now let me get to the people that can identify what I deal with on a routine basis. I'm so proud to have Salem City Mayor Renee Turk, Turk with us today. Renee Turk. Renee? And my brother in Christ, and also the mayor, the fine and great mayor of the town of Vinton, Mayor Bradley Ghost. Bradley. <laughs> I 
and my fellow uh, colleagues in governing the community, and I want to recognize those from Roanoke County uh, supervisors. Supervisors Paul Mahoney. Uh, Supervisor Phil North. And Supervisor Jason Peters. Thank you all for coming out. And I do want to uh, and recognize, and I wanted to, to recognize, and I should have did this earlier, but uh, it's always an honor, and you'll see here on some of my remarks, the superintendent of Royal Oak City School, very leader, White. And my friend that I just met personally, I knew of him and been following him, the president of Royal Oak College, Frank Shoshark. <laughs> and I look forward to some exciting things there. And any other elected official that I didn't recognize, please stand. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Um, I do want to tell all of you thank you and, and I just want to begin by saying that this has been a uh, tremendous year. I'm proud of all we had to do to overcome uh, challenges that we all have had and seen. And I'm proud to have all of you here. And I do want to recognize all of our city and school board employees. I could go spend the time today going down the list, but I want to recognize them for the work that they do in our community regarding health, safety, and the quality of life. So I want to thank, again, our city manager and our school superintendent for their staff that do a tremendous job. Give them a hand. I appreciate all that they do. Along with the city's uh, city managers staff and the city school staff, they do some awesome work uh, to make our city what it is, and they all are dedicated public service. Thank you to the Roanoke Regional Chamber of Commerce, its board members and directors, George Raw, for hosting this wonderful event, and to all those here at Hotel Roanoke that labor so hard those workers here at the hotel to work so hard to make this morning special. And so I want to ask you to give them a hand of applause for their work and commitment here. Thank you. And you heard it before, but I want to take uh, this moment to mention my wife, Clara, who uh, we were married for 44 years, and this is the first time I've done this that she's not been here. So uh, uh, I just want to mention her name along with my other family members. I'm proud to see that my son, Sherman Lee Jr., is here. And I'm proud of what he's doing. He's the president, the national president of the National Association of Blacks in Criminal Justice. So Sherman, stand up so people will see who you are. <laughs> All right, thank you all. A global pandemic, weights, rates of inflation not seen in more than 40 years, the great resignation, increases in those experiencing homelessness, political turmoil, Increased violence and the continued impact of climate change. And that's just the past couple of years for our nation, our state, and our city. Throughout these unprecedented times, our community continues to show up with compassion, determination, and innovation. Over the next several minutes, 
I will highlight how the city and region, uh, and I'm so glad to see my colleagues in the region here, how we have faced these challenges while continuing to seize upon some fabulous opportunities along the way, ensuring the state of our city remains strong. The challenges that I just mentioned are counted by a number of fabulous opportunities. The Korean Clinic Iron Man 70.3 in Virginia's Blue Ridge, the arrival of the 24th cycling team, the U.S. Cycling Amateur Road National Championship, continuation of Korean Clinic's more than $500 million expansion, the opening of the third downtown hotel Roanoke investment of $16 million by the Commonwealth in the Innovation Corridor, the largest investment in our parks in decades, and the beginning of investing an unprecedented $64.5 million in federal COVID relief. Though COVID remains ever present, having claimed the lives of 1,100 of our friends, relatives, and neighbors since its arrival, we can perhaps begin to say we're turning the corner from pandemic to endemic. We all owe a debt of gratitude to local health care workers and those in public health. And it's so important, and we think that without their tireless dedication, what we have experienced would have been far worse than what it was. They have earned and deserve our deep appreciation, and let's give them a hand of thanks for what they've done. Thank you. Thank you. Our local economy has begun to rebound from the economic impacts of COVID as we are seeing new businesses open and visitors return through funding provided by the CARES Act and American Rescue Plan Act in the city. And we're in partnership with the Royal Oak Economic Development Authority and others have invested over a million dollars in grants to local businesses along with making investments in downtown Royal Oak Incorporated. The Greater Williamson Road Area Business Association and others. As a consequence of the disruptions brought on by COVID, the nation has seen a dramatic increase in violence, especially gun violence. Sadly, the state of Virginia and our city are not immune from this scourge that is coming at us. We too have seen increases in gun violence related violence, homicides. As with COVID, though we have not sat by, and it's important that you know we've not sat by and idly and endured this, rather than we've acted and are addressing the issues of gun violence through a comprehensive framework. One focused on law enforcement and justice intervention and prevention. Our efforts include our continued and long-standing support of law enforcement. A series of bonuses, the largest pay increase in years, and most importantly, our never wavering support are but a few ways that we have demonstrated our continued commitment. We maintain a strong partnership with the Office of the U.S. Attorney and the U.S. Marshal. This partnership is resulting in arrest, seizures of guns, 
and convictions with long and meaningful sentences. We also know that law enforcement alone will not solve this issue. Gun violence is a community challenge. We must also interrupt the pattern of violence and prevent it from ever starting, especially among our youth. The city is a strong supporter of the efforts of the Ronald School Division and its 25-point plan to ensure that our children remain safe. This includes significantly increasing the number of law enforcement officers from our police department and the sheriff's office assigned to our schools. The council appointed Roanoke Gun Violence Prevention Commission, led by Council Member Cobb, has provided leadership and a number of grants to community-based organizations that have led to gun buybacks, uh, which our NWC president, Brenda Hale, was the leader in that area. Thank you, Brenda, for your efforts in that respect. You, we look, we're developing youth mentoring programs. Distribution of more than 8,000 free gun locks, and, and there are many more initiatives that we've started. Within our organization, the Star City Safe Initiative, an employee-led initiative, has provided extended hours at library branches, recreation centers, youth apprenticeship, employment program, and many more ways to engage with and support our youth, both their physical and, most importantly, their psychological needs. I have no doubt that these efforts will meet this challenge both in the short and the long term. COVID has similarly impacted homelessness throughout our nation. Through the hard work of our homeless assistance team and many of our community partners, we continue to see the overall number of individuals experiencing homelessness in our community decrease. Unfortunately, at the same time, the portion that are unsheltered has increased dramatically. A variety of factors, including evictions, drug addiction, and mental health issues contribute to this challenge that we face. As with violence, the city and its many partners are addressing the collaboratively and comprehensively those issues. Funding for mental health assistance has increased including the city's significant financial support of the opening of the new William and Margaret Robertson Behavioral Health Wing at the Bradley Free Clinic. Is anybody here from the Bradley Free Clinic? Well, I want to thank them for their commitment and effort in what they do. And there are so many organizations in our city that go under the radar that are doing some things that impact us every day. And I'm, I'm very proud of the work that they're doing. The city is providing funding for the region's response to addiction, enabling the hiring of coordinating staff, and at the same time, fighting through the courts to ensure that these individuals and companies responsible for the opioid epidemic pay their fair share and addressing the ills that have resulted. More than five million of our federal COVID rescue funds are dedicated directly addressing the needs of homeless individuals and families, expanding shelter options and outreach services, and provide supportive transitional housing. The council also made the difficult but necessary decision to ban camping in our downtown. 
and that was a difficult choice, but we had to make that decision. We simply could not have a vibrant downtown economy without this action, and we must and can do better for our unsheltered neighbors than house them in tents on our sidewalks. We got to do better. We got to do better than that, and I think we, we're doing that. Over the course of the last 10 years, with the city's leadership, we have seen homelessness in our community decrease by more than 61%. This year, our outreach team and their partners have helped house 159 individuals who were living outside. I have no doubt that we will meet this latest challenge and we will do so by helping one person at a time, just as our outreach team did a couple of months ago with these two gentlemen who have gone from living outside for years, think about that, for years they're living outside, to, place, to a place of their own where they can reclaim their dignity and their lives. And I'm very much appreciative of that as mayor of the city. And I want to thank those people. And I could go down the line and be here. Uh, uh, Rams House, I want to thank Rescue Mission. I want to thank TAP. And I'm glad to see uh, Annette Lewis here today, my friend. So we're doing the work. Again, as I said, not sitting, sitting idly by, but we're making an impact on this. Let me ask you a question. Has anyone in this room had a challenge hiring people? <laughs> well, I'm here to assure you that you are not alone. <laughs> Once again, a national trend, not a Roanoke City trend, but a national trend has found this way to Roanoke. The great, we call it the great resignation has been felt throughout the local economy and within the city government workforce. Alongside many of you, we're struggling and with to really make certain, to make certain we can hire and retain enough police officers, which has become a topic of a lot of campaigning uh, this year, but that's, that's politics. But the thing of the matter is we've got to make sure and we're doing what we can to house, hire and retain enough police officers, sanitation workers, transit operators, bus drivers. We're down a large number now, almost 25. Accountants and others to deliver the services needed. We're feeling that great resignation in terms of trying to hire people. For our local businesses, we've dedicated portions of our federal rescue funds to support small businesses and address workforce issues. The Star City Works Program is one example where the city has partnered with the Greater Roanoke Workforce Development Board to match job openings in key economic sectors with job training for those in our community who are unemployed or underemployed. We also continue to support our school's efforts at expanding their vocational training program through the establishment of a second technical education center at the old Ruffner School facility. We also continue through our financial empowerment center to help residents build wealth and put more of their earnings to productive use. In just two short years, the Financial Empowerment Center has helped area residents reduce their non-mortgage debt by over a million dollars and increase their personal savings by nearly $250,000. I have no doubt that the current challenge will be met by these types of actions and that our workforce and local economy will be better for it. 
Well, Oak is a great place to live, and we want to do all we can to keep it that way. In the past year, the council approved more funding for our parks and recreation programs than has been provided in decades. And I've been around here in decades. <laughs> These funds have already replaced six playgrounds, resurfaced 35 athletic courts, installed the region's first beautiful court, paved trailhead parking, and started design on a new recreation center and a new swimming pool. And much more is to come with that. We continue to invest in our transit operations with new buses, new technology, and a great new transfer facility in downtown. And as you can see, the construction is going on now. Uh, just maintain that vision now. Sometimes people in, the, in our arena say, they, they look at it and say, hey, it's not going to happen. Maintain that vision. And I'll be back before you when we complete that. But that's going to be impressive, and it's something we're going to be proud of. And in March, we came together to celebrate the opening of the Lyft Center adjoining Fallon Park Elementary School in Southeast Roanoke. The center is a partnership between Roanoke City Public Schools, Carillion Clinic, Delta Dental, and Freedom First Credit Union. It provides families in the Fallon Park community with access to physical, oral, financial, and wellness resources in one convenient location. I think that's going to serve that community well, and that's great, and having it right there in that community that needs it. This year, we look forward to additional resources, including mental health support, for students and their families, and offering a holistic approach to family strengthening and health. This year has been declared the Year of the Artist, where we celebrate throughout the year the contribution arts and artists make to our local economy, quality of life, and our well-being. This includes a number of artists in residence, a new art exhibit in the municipal building, new murals, and a number of new sculptures. We also acknowledge that the climate is changing. And I think we all see that. Whether we agree with it or not, but we all see that the climate is changing and that we need to continue to adapt to slow its impact and to prepare for a different future that likely includes more frequent and destructive weather events. The introduction of a plastic bag tax to reduce the number of single-use plastic bags in our community is part of this response, this response that we have. And when I go through the checkout line at the grocery store, citizens let me know a little bit about that plastic bag tag. Uh, it never leaves. It never leaves. I can't get away. But, but we think that's going to help our community. And as is our purchase also of electric transit buses, continued electrification of our municipal fleet. And yesterday I had a chance to, to visit with the uh, national Secretary of Energy that was here with us yesterday along with Senator Kane, and, and we're proud to say that Roanoke is leading in terms of the things we're doing with regards to energy. And so I'm proud of that. And so, uh, and we've began working in the electrification of our municipal fleet, continued acquisition of flood prone properties and various stormwater investments. We have a responsibility to ensure Roanoke remains a great place to live, work, and play. And we take that seriously. And our actions and our investments clearly demonstrate 
this commitment. The world economy is strong and resilient. While the impact of COVID certainly was felt here as elsewhere, businesses have rebounded with vigor. We don't take this for granted and with our economic development team and partners are working, we're working diligently to ensure continued success. These efforts include investments in our neighborhood centers, preparation and preparing the city's first ever economic development strategic plan, preparation of a development plan for the Evans Springs area, continued support of the development of the regional business park. And I thank my colleagues from Bruno County and Salem who've joined in together to make that a reality. And that's why I'm always appreciative of us working regionally because we can do great things, great things together. And so uh, the business park at Woodhaven continued support of ramp and development of a new shared lab facility in the Innovation Quarter in partnership with the state of Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Carillion Clinic. You've heard me say Carillion Clinic a number of times in here. We're so proud of our working in partnership with Carillion. They do a good job and, and uh, we're very supportive of the things they're doing. We thank them for their partnership with the city of Roanoke. We continue our strong support of downtown with our investment in jumpstarting a downtown ambassadors program and along Williamson Road with recent expansion of the boundaries of the Greater Williamson Road Business Association in pursuit of over $20 million to address transportation concerns. Our continued support of our regional partnerships with Virginia's Blue Ridge, Roanoke Valley Broadband Authority, the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport, and others have helped attract such events as the U.S. Cycling Amateur World National Championship and the 24th cycling team, as well as expanded access to broadband and additional transportation options by plane or train. People are coming here. People are coming here to Roanoke. The Roanoke region is the economic engine for this portion of Virginia, and we will continue to do all we can to ensure its strength and vitality. And I was pleased to be in a meeting a couple of weeks ago when Senator Warner came and brought a check down for the Roanoke Blacksburg Airport for all of us in this region, not just for Roanoke, but the region. And that's, that's so important to our community. While challenges, of course, are present in Roanoke as they are in any urban center, we are a safe, caring, and economically vibrant community. And we strive to ensure all of our residents, all of them, have equal opportunity to prosper in our great city. The actions and partnerships that I have highlighted ensure we remain Star City strong, that we ensure the urban, and we'll say that again, the urban, in our metro mountain region remains strong, and indeed it is. Our police department and E911 department remain accredited by the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement. More than 5,000 participated in Ironman, the Blue Ridge Marathon, and the U.S. Cycling Amateur Road Championships. And those are people that come to our area and they're so impressed with what they see the cleanliness, and even more important to me, the friendliness of people, the friendly when they come here. And so I've been impressed with that. 28,000 people attended GoFest in downtown Roanoke. The USA Today named us the best urban kayaking spot in the nation. And we are adding an in-river kayak park to keep that title. 
Now, I can watch that, but I don't do too much of the kayaking. <laughs> but I'm proud that I watched that, and I'm proud of that on them. We were a 2022 All-American City finalist. As most of you know, we were a seven-time All-American City, and we were finalists this year. I'm proud of that. Our libraries were honored with the 2021-2022 Paysetter Award from the Campaign for Grade Level Reading. We placed fourth in the Digital Cities Survey and were recognized as a top 10 Digital Cities winner for the 20th consecutive year. At Public Works, Service Center was awarded the Destination of Exemplary Environmental Enterprise by the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality. Roanoke tied for first place for the cleanest, cleanest metropolitan areas in the country for ozone and the cleanest metropolitan area in the country for air pollution, according to the American Lung Association. Thank you. Our Department of Social Services completed more successful adoptions than any other local agency in the state for the fifth year in a row. <laughs> During the 20, 21, 20, 22 school year, 16 individuals and team regional championship titles were won by our student athletes. And 17 of those graduating student athletes were recruited to play at the collegiate level. Thank you, school board. Thank you for what you all are doing there. That's great. That's great news. <laughs> the NAMM Foundation named Roanoke City Public Schools one of the best communities for music education for the 10th year in a row. And seven Patrick Henry High School students were named commended students in the National Merit Scholarship Program. Thank you, school board. Thank you, Superman. <laughs> and more youth attended our annual youth summit this year than any previous year. Thank you, Councilwoman Price, for your work on that. We appreciate you. <laughs> so in closing, let me extend the challenge to, to each of you. Join me and the City Council and all of our regional partners to tell the great story that Roanoke and Virginia's Blue Ridge We're, we're resilient, and we're doing some tremendous things for our community. We don't let our challenges define our identity. We don't run from them. We confront and overcome them. We remain a city and a region, and a region. And I like to say that because we've got some great people in our region that I work with. And, we, you know, a region on the rise, and we must continue to do all we can to ensure that remains the case far into the future. Yeah, you're going to get criticism. You're going to get things that people say, why are you doing that and why are you doing that? But we have to keep marching. You have to stay committed to do what you've done People sometimes think we just come up with ideas and take off on it. No, there are studies that's done. We evaluate that. We stay the course. So thank you all, thank the region. We got to keep moving. And we must celebrate all we have and our accomplishment, accomplishment, accomplishing in our community and continue to tell the world that a special and vibrant place is in this region, Warren Oak and Warren Oak Valley. We're a special place, special people, special people. And I can attest to that because I work with them. They're special people. Yeah, we get knocked down. But I always used to tell my Sunday school class, it's not who gets knocked down that makes it. 
is who gets back up. And COVID and all the things we have to deal with, we have to keep going and we have to work with each other, collaborate. Sure, we'll get angry. Sure, we'll disagree. And uh, that happened. But we cannot take our eyes off the prize. We got to stay there. Stay there. And don't let these personal things come. And, and I can tell you, they're coming. I get phone calls from, you know, you'd be, I won't go into that because I'd be here telling you about the things that they get, but it's, it's important. And this is a vibe and a special place that we live in. So thank all of you, and may God bless Roanoke, this region, and Virginia's Blue Ridge. God bless you as you go forth. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Mayor Lee. We appreciate your remarks today, and we look forward to working toward continued economic growth in the city of Roanoke. Um, I tell you, when you start seeing some of this fantastic photography, and I actually learned a few things in some of the awards and accolades, gosh, it makes you proud to live here. Um, it makes it easy to, to, to attract talent, for sure. Um, one additional note before we get you out of here, today, the state of the city address will be replayed on RVTV on um, um, uh, tomorrow at August 26th at 7 p.m. and then Saturday, August 27th at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and then Monday, August 29th at noon and 8 p.m. You can also find a recording of the event on the City of Roanoke's Facebook page or rvtv.org slash Roanoke. Once again, thank you to our annual Public Policy Program work sponsors, Mountain Valley Pipeline, RGC Resources, and Lineberger Construction. Our presenting sponsor today, Appalachian Power, and our platinum sponsor, Virginia 811. And again, a thank you to all of our gold sponsors. We could not have put this on without this great event without your support. I also want to take a moment to, again to, to honor the, the chamber team. They do so much work behind the scenes that make all of this possible. They, they're superhuman, and so if you don't mind, give them a round of applause as well. All right, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you all for being here with us.